Hello everyone! Welcome to our Let's Play series of Battletech. This is Colonel RPG, as usual. And I'm very happy that you chose to join me today here after that huge thing. I don't even remember the name of that. The Argo went up. I think it might have been the Argo. And that's all of us. Wait a minute. No, it's not. I don't know you. I don't know you. I, I thought this was because um, of the glasses. Uh, they, they look so close to... What's his name? Darius? Yeah, but it's, it's not. It also looks very different, so... Like, in terms of style as well. Which might be, actually, the characters are different. Ana Maria Castrella. Lady Ana Maria Castrella is over here with us. You've done excellent work, Commander Sun Wilder. And you've earned yourself a, an opportunity to do more. Meet your real client. I don't believe that she needs an introduction. Uh... No, she doesn't, actually, but she looks very different from the cutscene. Now that you say that she doesn't need an introduction, she's alive! I don't know who he is, though. Do I? Yeah, this is Princess, uh, whatever. The one that we thought died in the, uh, huge thing that f flew and dis got destroyed at the beginning of the game. Kamea Arano, that's right. I'm happy to see you again, Vic. Or should I say, Commander? You've done well for yourself. The old man would be pleased. It must come as a shock to you seeing us here at Alloway. Seeing us at all. I apologize for that, but I had to be sure that you were the mech warrior I remembered before I reached out to you. And now with the Argo on its way to Lyriton Le for repairs, I know. You are everything I remember, and more. Lyriton is a system in the Oregon frontier, formerly Kaplan Garrison World, lost uh, after the Second Succession War and a bunch of other history. Uh, I can't believe you're standing here. The entire Reach is convinced that you're dead. She was, she was dead, says Darius. Lord Madeira too. I'm sorry, Lady Orano, but the news feed, the news feeds ran footage of your dropship getting blown out of the sky on a loop for months. That wasn't her dropship, says Ana Maria Centrella. The broadcasts of her death were directorate propaganda. Well, crafted lies to keep the masses... Oh, well-crafted lies to keep the masses in line. And with that, Kamea, I'll leave you to your reunion. Best of luck with the negotiations, and let and, and keep me appraised of whatever decision you come to. Lady Centrella's face winks off, uh, off the view screen. The dull blue glow of her hollow projection slowly dies away. Lady Centralia was right about the propaganda, Vic, says Kamea. My uncle's directorate is run on lies, though in this case they were very nearly they very nearly came true. The directorate's assassins pursued us into the frontier. In the months following the coup, we had more than our share of close calls. Eventually they gave up looking for us, and we've been living in exile ever since. Yeah, well, I know what that's like. I've been there myself. Where have the two of you been hiding? As far... Oh, wait a minute, it's Madeira. Oh, I don't... Yeah, I only saw your portrait. That's why I don't remember you. As, as far from the directorate space as we could get without leaving the frontier, he says. A miserable little ball of rock called Xanthras. It was a nasty, brutish planet full of inter... Inter... What? Internecine? Internecine? Strife and bloody turmoil. That's what he says. Uh, there were power struggles and mad nobles, plagues and zealots and holy wars. So you're saying it was a typical frontier world? That's Yang who's talking. More or less, says Kamea. Living on Koromodir, I heard stories about the problems that many frontier systems face, but I was detached. I never saw how rough life outside the Oregon Coalition could get. My uncle's coup changed everything, Vic. Including me. Well, you had Centralia send us after the Argo. I'd like to know why. It was... Par, in part as, as a test of your ability, says Madeira, to make sure that your performance on Koromodir wasn't a fluke. Our experience in the coup has taught us to be careful. Commander Sunwilder, we wouldn't just reach out to you on faith. But the Argo herself is important to us, says Kamea. She isn't just a ship, Vic. She's a symbol of reclamation and rebirth and return of better days. You'll see for yourself soon enough. She was a majestic vessel once, a true product of the Star League. Under Dr. Murad's care, she will be again. The Star League, that's, yeah, that's been, like, uh, 27 AD. That's, like, three, uh, more than 300 years ago. No, more than 200 years ago, I think. The Star League was an interstellar council formed by the Terran hegemony that ended, ended in civil war when the leader of the Rimworld 
Rimworld's Republic, that's the Amari, uh, Stefan Amari, or Amaris, murdered the first lord in an... Uh, it might have been the first succession war or something like that, I don't know. Okay, you made it off of Koromodir, and you found me. Let's talk about why. I imagine you've already guessed, says Kamea. I intend to seek justice for my uncle's crimes. I intend to take ba my throne back. But I can't do it without you. We have resources, says Madeira. An army drawn from all across the frontier. Perhaps most importantly, we have the patronage of Lady Centrella and the, ta uh, the tacit support of her government. That means money. A great deal of money. Uh... I hadn't realized the Oregon Coalition was on such good terms with m the Magistracy. It wasn't, not really, says Madeira. But they wanted to see the Directorate dealt with. That it isn't in their interest to do it themselves. They prefer to keep their own hands clean. In light of this, Kamea's claims to the throne is an asset worth paying for. The Reem word periphery is a powder keg, Vic, says Kamea. Tensions between the Torian Concordat and the Federation Sons are high, and my uncle's military posturing could be viewed as a provocation by either side. If open conflict between superpowers were to erupt, it'd be difficult to anyone for anyone to remain neutral. The Magistracy wants to avoid getting dragged into a major war. And your house Centralia's best hope for a clean rev a clean solution, says Darius. They fill your war chest, you remove the Directorate from the board, and the Magistracy lets tensions between the Federated Sons and Torians simmer down on their own. Am I reading the situation correctly, Lady Arano? Correctly enough, Mr. Oliveira. But, um, understand that this isn't just about defusing a dangerous situation. For me, taking on the Directorate is personal. My uncle betrayed me. The Founding Council has been reduced to a handful of powerless figureheads. Our very identity has been cut away and dis discarded. House Espinosa is long overdue for a reckoning, and with your help, I will bring them one. Join with me, Vic, and we will not fail. Uh, well, that's, that's definitely what I'm, I want to do, is join with you. Excuse the, the hiccup. Uh, you've already so sold me on this, for sure. Your cause is honorable. Well, I want to say it's... Oh, well, I mean, it, it is honorable. I don't really like... And I think it's very... Um, I think it's um, on purpose that she's like, it's my throne, it's my rule, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm not really sure how good of a ruler she would be, of course, uh, but the pragmatical side of things is that uh, there is a uh, an authoritarian regime that has basically take taken over her, well, at least from the perspective we have anyway, uh, that has taken over her rifle rule, and yeah, even though she's currently a rebel, and probably just currently, probably presumed death, dead by everyone, even maybe the people who she's fighting against, so that's an interesting way of looking at it, uh, because they, even though they did say that, even though they don't know that she died, they probably think that she did, but who knows, maybe not. Because, you know, the space, space is a dangerous place. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not going to go with the honorable one. I'm going to go, yeah. You've already sold me on this, Kamea. I pledge myself and my company to your cause. No questions asked to my teammates, by the way. I was hoping you'd say that, she says. Of course, you cannot wage war on my behalf while your travel restrictions remain in place. And so I shall break them. Now that you have pledged yourself to me, I will buy your company's debts, all of them. You'll be free to travel and seek clients as you please, so long as you come to me when I call for you. And on the day that I reclaim my throne, your obligation to me will be forgiven. Your debt wiped clean. Of course, you will also be paid for every battle you fight at our behest, says Madeira. At a rate that will feel quite generous, given the clientele that you are accustomed to. Thanks to House Centrella, we have money to burn. Uh, money to burn, I like the sound of that. Um, well, I'll justify your faith in me, Lady Alano. Together, we'll make Mastiff Montgomery proud. Yeah, that's a, a, that's a nice objective, to try and honor the, the memory of, of Mastiff. I'm pleased that you feel that way, she says. In truth, I feel that Sir Raju is smiling down on us even now. I'll take my leave of you now. I have an army to rally and in preparations to make. But it won't be long before I contact you again. And when I do, I'll need you ready. Prepare yourself and your company, Vic. Our war is about to begin. Lady Anna... Who's talking to me? Uh, that's... Is that Meyer? Lady Anna just brought up all 
or bought up all of our debt, Commander. That means no more banks restricting our jump ship access. We can travel to more systems now, but we, sh we should still... We should should still still... We should still steer clear of the major... That's, that's quite something. Because it's steer clear and then still steer... Should still steer clear of the major states. We don't want it to look like we're going to cut and run. Good news, Commander, says... Uh, uh, Ian? Yeah, Young, sorry, not Ian. Uh, good news, Commander. Once Doc Murad and her crew got that wrecked ship safely away, they found most of a Centurion. What is that? Is that a medium one? That is a medium one. In its cargo hold. It's not equipped for combat yet, but with a little love and attention, I think I could return it to service. Swing by the magpay to check it in and order a refit. Def that Nick you asked for is cleared for fighting. Well, apparently it's good to go. A, st a sturdy and reliable mech, the Centurion, is a good at both taking and giving a beating. CN9A models, that's the Centurion 9A, I suppose, uh, are able to engage at any range, but their damage curve increases as they approach a target. It's so cool that they have, like, a, a code name and, and then a than an actual serial number or a serial name. That's pretty cool. Decker is out of action for 53 days. Uh, we got a financial report before that, uh, like, halfway through. That's fine. Uh, timeline is paused. Let's see. We got the hiring hall. I don't think we're going to get new people. Th these are all recruit levels, so let's not go with that. And we have the store. Uh, looking for the star cross or star marked ones. I don't know how they look uh, or where they are. So I could also sell things. That's something I forget. Wait a minute. What? Why do I only have that? Max? Why do I only have that? Did I get the other ones? Or can't I sell that? Maybe I can sell that. Maybe that's what that is. Can I buy mechs? Uh, oh, it's it's a little bit pricey. We got a spider over here. The panther. Uh, yeah, I, I tend to use panthers because they're pretty heavy for lights. Uh, well, I tend to remember using panthers anyway. Uh, they're pretty decent, actually. 35 tons is, is pretty good. I don't know. It doesn't say how many I have right now. Uh, of the I don't have any. I know I don't. But uh, let's go. Command center. We got contracts. Hey, Darius. Uh, and we have Hold the Line over here. Quite a lot of money. And a bunch of salvage as well. So that's pretty good. But I might want to go for this one before that happens. This is all here where we are. So that's pretty good as well. Uh, and then I have Darius. You got questions? I have answers. Mm-hmm. So we're working for Lady Arano now. That was a surprise. Yeah, you're telling me. The Wall Reach has thought she was has thought she was dead for three years now, and yet here she is. I've got to say, it feels pretty good to be on a contract with House of Rano again. Last time it this happened, Commander Markham was still alive. Uh, what kind of man was he, Markham? Markham was an ordinary old bastard, but he got the job done. Great card player, and he shared my taste in hollow hoods. He used to have these marathon viewing sessions. Have you ever seen These Gears of Teeth? Great film, and a masterpiece of the Tukusatsu Gallo... Jallo? Maybe. Genre. Markham always loved that one. I wish I could watch it again with him sometime. Generally they do. Uh, was he a competent mech commander? More or less. Was a decent tactician, but an exceptional businessman. I wish you could have seen him in action, Vic. His style was this odd mix of negotiating and holding court, and when it worked, it worked. Let me give you an example. I can't really do justice to Markham's style, but for the sake of the story, I'll try. You know how Draconis Combine rep, uh, Shugo Reynold Yamaguchi? Um, you know our, the, the rep, okay, yeah. Markham gave him a nickname, Bob Kurita. Every time he used it, he was totally deadpan, and he always used the full name. You're trying to pull the wool over my eyes, Bob Kurita? Tell me more about that assassination contract, Bob Kurita. Bob Kurita, you look tense. Do you need a glass of wine? That sounds insulting, I know. Yeah, he does. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, it worked. Something about the way Markham leaned into that stupid nickname tickled Shugo Yamaguchi pink. He'd giggle his way through every negotiation until tears were streaming down his cheeks. Yeah, he had a routine like that for every liaison we dealt with. Some he'd rib, others he'd smooth talk. Yeah, everyone always left the table with a smile on their face. Anyway, that's all ancient history now. Markham is dead and gone, and he, we buried his personal effects along with his memory. And we did right by his skin. Best to leave the past behind. This company isn't his anymore, Vic. It's yours. So let's focus on what we're doing next and leave the past in the past. No, it's a good story. Um, that's an inter interesting character right there. Although writing a character like that is really, really tricky. So having somebody else tell about that character is probably better for believability. Because can you imagine like being able to pull that in real life? You need to be good. Being able to pull that in a history 
you know, sorry, not a history, but sort of a fiction, you need to be better because uh, not only do you need to come up with the lines that are going to work, you need to come up with lines that are going to work under scrutiny because a lot of a lot of negotiation is um, is just it's also a lot about body language and then using like insights and jokes and being able to you know make it believable. Uh, but when you're writing it in a story, it it just becomes more. It's like if you just if you write what I mean is if you write down stuff that we as normal humans do. In a, into a story, it doesn't sound believable because a lot of it, it just doesn't translate well. Uh, like, you know, somebody letting things go or, like, easy things like, um, think of think of um, mysteries, like, think of murder mysteries the things that murder mystery writers go to, the lengths that they go to none of that happens in real life it's always a lot simpler and even then things happen, even then murder ha murders happen and murderers get away uh, so if you write the, the real like it needs to be more better than reality to be believable. And that's what I mean. That's a really tricky character to write. Not, I'm not saying that I wouldn't like to see that character written, but still. Anyway, I got some questions about running this company. I think I've asked you a lot of those already, but let's find out. Mm, yep, I have indeed. Good stuff. Uh, got a few minutes to chat. Like to catch up. Do you have anything new? No, he doesn't. Okay. I don't know why though. Uh, those are uh, marked as. Catch you later, Commander. Yeah, catch you later. Marked as not asked. I got make words over here. That's our guys, though. So, uh, Decker is out of commission for right now. He probably can level Receiving up, though. Uh, he's gaining 40k a yeah. month. Why is he gaining more than everybody else? Waiting for orders. Decker, what's going on? What's going on? You're gonna... You are. Why? Is your beard or something? Is that is that the reason? Nobody else has a beard. So... Aye, aye. Eh, that doesn't count. And also you say, aye, aye. aye. Anyway, uh, can't buy anything. I could buy this. Not gonna buy anything. Good to go. Everyone yep. has. Commander. Uh, let's not actually level them up right now. Let's level them up before a mission. That, that might be better. And then we have our mech bay. And there they go. So I can repair and refit. So repairs are just normal. I can refit them after. Armor doesn't matter because you can just change the armor. It, it's done immediately, as we saw. So we have a Blackjack, that's a medium, a Vindicator, a medium, a Shadowhawk, and we have a Spider who, that is actually really bad, and we have all the parts, and we have a Locust over here. I could sell the Locust, because we have a Locust already. Yeah, good stuff. Let's sell the Locust. Let's go over here into Command Center, Contracts, nope, it's Leopard Store. Leopard Store, this could be a little bit more... L less sub menu, but it might show up more stuff later. Let's sell our little locust part. Sell for yeah, sell for that. Hmm? Oh, I, I I think that's the okay on the left side. It's Windows, you know how it is. Uh, let's see. So I can go into the base. So we have a locust, and we can take it out of storage when we need to. That's not really what I want. We got a Centurion, but that means it doesn't, it's not refitted. Refit to view, yeah, okay. So I need to refit this guy, and that's gonna take a little while. Um, the problem is I also need to repair a few things. Uh, so, how much, how long, six days to repair. And a Blackjack, five days to repair. Oh, can I cancel? I didn't want to do that. Again, with a okay being on the opposite side. Well, I'm doing that now. And I can refeed you. Definitely want to refeed you. So let's see what I have over here. We got a medium laser. Uh, maximum armor, go up. Uh, no weapons. We got a medium laser over here, and we have nothing else. Okay. What do you like using? Actually, what do you like using? That is medium lasers, auto cannons, long range missiles. Very varied one. Yeah. Medium range, though, all things considered. Hmm. It's a pretty straightforward mech. So, you like having medium lasers and long range missiles. The auto cannon is very important, though. So, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the long range missiles. So, I'm going to have you. Let's untoggle all of these. Let's put you. Oh, you can only take the medium lasers over here. Two lasers right there. 
Interesting. Okay. Uh, and I want the auto cannons. What auto cannons do you take? Auto cannons 10. That is a heavy auto cannon. Holy crap. Do I have any? I don't, but I have four of these. So that's nice. It's a little bit lighter. No, I can only take one. Oh. Oh, is it like missiles on one side and auto cannons on the other? That's kind of cool. Uh, long range missile 5. Long range missile 10. Oh, I can take more. So, that's just the amount of missiles that go. Uh, tonnage is pretty good, although with the ammo. What's the tonnage on this little guy over here? Uh, tonnage, eh, tonnage is decent. Wait a minute, I've already put it, it's a 10 already, so I could put another one. Heck yeah. It's quite something if I do that. The problem, of course, is the ammo here. And it is gonna sacrifice a lot of the, uh... It is gonna sacrifice a lot of the... A lot of the um, medium range hits. So I kind of want medium range missiles, but there's no such thing, is there? Is there medium range missiles? I don't remember. Let's cancel. Uh, don't don't do anything. Just go away. That's the one. Okay. Uh, let's go over here into Leopard and Store, and see if we have medium range missiles. If they exist, they are going to be here. Short range missiles. So, yeah. What's the... I need to look into. Look, need to go in here. So that this goes after the... So we're going to have to wait a little bit. That's fine. We don't... It's not a problem. I don't think. Uh, so, yeah. If I, if I make this guy just a medium range uh, brawler, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, so what I want to look at... Uh, that's... L laser, large laser, exhibits a powerful combination of damage range. Uh, I wonder how di uh, heat dis dissipation is going to be, so if I put that over there, yeah, I'm going to need to, yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. La large rate, large large lasers are going to be pretty good. Uh, and then I'm going to go with the autocannons. Uh, it's only one of these. But, um, but the idea here is to tell, how do I tell the, the range? There it is. So, minimum range 90, optimal 360. So that's actually very important. Optimal 180, 300. Mm, they're pretty close by as well. The large la laser can shoot really long. So between 200 and 300 meters. That's an interesting one on that auto cannon. How, do, how about this one? Oh, that shoots even further. Sniper auto cannon. Ah, I see. And we have this one, which would be... Oh, that's for ammo only. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So if I want another auto cannon, I don't have another auto cannon. Like, for example, if I want to have a sniper, I, I can put it over there. But I can't put auto cannons anywhere else. Kind of looks... No, that's for missiles. So what I want here is to have short-range missiles, but missiles that at least hit something. Now look at that. That's not too bad. 270. That's, that's a thing that I can do. 180. These also work. We've seen these work. The problem here is going to be the the tonnage. Uh, so I kind of want. What's the what's the weight on these? Three tonnage. That's not bad. I can do this. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. And then I have short range ammo. Uh, put it over there. The, the thing is, blowing these up is nasty. Uh, they're not. They're kind of well protected, sort of. But they're also exposed. The these sides of. The size of the, the mech. I should put it over there. So, keep things a little bit controlled. And, of course, we're going to need a bunch of those. Uh, so, uh, auto cannon, 5 ammo. Uh, put it on the legs or something. Tonnage is... Yeah, that's pretty good. This is a good mech. Of course, it's going to take a little while to... Um, to work. Ooh. It's not a good idea to do that. Um, so, yeah. Reducing on the legs... Uh, reduce it on the arms. Reduce on that arm. But don't reduce on this. Uh, and then everything. Oh, oh, going up. Going over. There it is. Yeah. They weigh... No, they don't weigh different different amounts. Good stuff. How long is this going to take? 
forever. That's how long. It's gonna take 25 days and a little bit of money. That's that's good enough. This is gonna be a, an exciting right. mech to, I'll get it in the to have. Uh, I'm gonna need upgrades there. Let's have a need chat with Yang. Done, Commander. How's it going, man? Uh, you wanna talk about our new employer? Lady Aranu, yeah. Look, I know that you two that you two go way back. You had the same teacher and all that. Hell, you were working for her on the day of the coup. If you hadn't been doing that, you never would have joined this crew. But I'm not sure that I trust Lady Arano or Lord Madeira. I don't know. Maybe I'm leaping to judgment. I like having money, so I hope that I am. There's just something about the idea of working for yet another shadowy aristocratic power player that I don't like. For what it's worth, though, I hope she proves me wrong. Yeah, I think I feel the same. I think that has to sort of the same thing to do with what I was saying before about her. Oh, it's my throne and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I'm not really sure. But anyway, we're out of time for the day, so... Anytime. Let's see what happens next episode. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Battletech. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and look at that mech. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if you did... Go ahead and leave a comment, like the video, if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.